You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. And so if you know me on Twitter, the gaming drag today, I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Heart of Amethyst, Roderick's Path. So y'all, yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm Chan, you are up, and let's go. Alright. Um, I don't know what you mean. The wolf certainly wasn't buying it, as he raises his eyebrow at me and crosses his arms. I thought you were supposed to be happy to see him. And I am. Bullshit. What would you know? Before I notice, I respond to him angrily, readying myself for the retaliation, looking away and closing my eyes. But as long as I wait, the yelling never comes. Instead of that, when I open my eyes, I just see Roderick smirking at me. Heh. <laughs> You're right, Runt. I don't know. To be honest, I don't care much about this. So let's go then. Get this over with. This feels different than our usual interactions, and I don't like it one bit. This time, I feel like the asshole. Uh, he was worried, uh, wasn't he? In his own weird way, he was. The wolf just wanted to check in on me, and I shut him out like that. So not wanting to feel like the asshole anymore, I decided to speak up my mind. I'm nervous, okay? I, I don't know what the old man's reaction will be, or if he'll even be happy to see me. I screwed up really bad, and I'm scared. The wolf smirks again, which only helps to increase the feeling of uneasiness in my chest. He's really acting weird today. It's always the same with you, haven't you noticed? What? Let me ask you something, Runt. What did you feel when I told you about the fight with Eddie? I don't under- Answer the damn question. His tough personality turned and turned and returned, and to be honest, he feels better when he talks to me like that. It's not so creepy to put it somehow. I was scared. Exactly. And what did you feel when the king told you that you were going to stay at the island? I was... scared. Indeed. So, imagine if I had a golden coin for every time you shit your pants or ever, whenever you face a new challenge. Then I would probably be richer than the king himself. I've told you many times, to grow some balls. And this will not be the exception. So grow some balls and go talk to that man. You owe him that much. With that said, the wolf leans on a wall nearby and closes his eyes. He's clearly done with the conversation, so I respect that and say nothing else. Doc, like I had anything to say, say back. The wolf read me like a book, and he was right about most of the things he said. I follow his advice, though. I need to speak to Mr. With Mr. Blah. I need to speak with Mr. Biscotti, no matter what. With that in mind, I entered the shop. The first thing I noticed as I entered the shop is the smell of dust, which is weird because if there is something Mr. Biscotti hates, that would be dust. But he's probably been too busy attending to the shop and buying supplies to even care about cleaning. Hey, old man, I'm back. Sorry for taking so long. I call out for him, but there's no response. And maybe he went out to buy some supplies. But that's weird. Why would he leave the door unlocked, then? I take a sniff around, and I notice that I can't smell him. Only his lingering old man scent that has impregnated and that has been that has been impregnated into this place for years. I mean, imprinted? And now that I look closely, there's a lot of dust and some broken glass on the floor. The books aren't arranged properly, and some important artifacts are missing from the shelves. Someone entered this place, but who and why? And more importantly, what happened to the old man? I desperately move around, lifting every single nook and cranny in the shop, trying to find any clue that would allow me to figure out what the hell happened here. But there's nothing, only missing objects. And no signs of struggle, no damage aside from two bottles that broke. What was that? Okay. I keep trying to sniff around, but there are only ling lingering scents, nothing revealing. Damn it, what happened here? The drawers, the shelves, even under the beds. Nothing. It doesn't matter how hard I try, there's nothing here. Not a single note, a clue, just an empty shop. I'm about to give up, then. Of course! I say to myself, walking straight for the second cabinet in the wall. I push the heavy object to the side and notice, to our, notice that our secret hiding spot is still there. It's just a hole in the wall, but we used to store any sort of important artifact that we come across. Getting my hand in there, I notice that there is only one thing inside of it. I quickly take it out, noticing that it's a nicely wrapped package with a note attached to it. Inspecting it, it seems to be some sort of book, but I'm more interested in the note that I that I came that I, that it, the note that came with it. And folding it as fast as I can, I immediately notice that this is Mr. Biscotti's handwriting. It seems to be a letter, and thank the goddesses, it's addressed to me. It reads, "Early, my boy. My only hope is that if you found this letter, you made your way back home safely." I'm sure you're aware of it, but things got out of hand pretty quickly. 
Some knights came the other day to deliver a letter and some money from you. I'm not sure why you did it, or even how you did it, but, but I want you to know that I trust you. I'm aware of your goals and aspirations, and I know you're a smart kid. So if becoming the king's retainer is what you need to accomplish them, then so be it. We'll always have your back, although I wish you would have told me before blowing up an entire house. In any case, I really appreciate the money. I would like to tell you that I will use it to improve the shop, but given the circumstances, it seems like I will have to use it for another trip to the forest. You see, a few days after you left, I spotted a few cloaked figures inspecting the shop. They've been here three times already, and one day, one of them came in asking a few questions about you. Of course, I didn't talk. But now I worry about my safety, so I'm leaving the shop tonight. I'll go to our recorded destination and wait for you there. I'll dig out the heart and keep it safe. If I must, I'll throw it into the sea as we agreed. I'll wait for you as long as I'm looking for you in there as long as I need to. But please, ease this old man's worries and send me a letter with someone you trust. And don't you dare worry about me. I'll be fine. You take care of yourself, and for the love of the goddesses, stay safe. You're all I have left, and I don't want to lose you too, boy. Love you, kiddo. Petey, you never told me what you wanted for your birthday, so I got you a new travel diary. I'm sure you'll live a lot. Of, I'm sure you'll live a lot of new adventures from now on. So make sure to write them all down. Make sure to write them all here, so I can read them once we meet again. I dropped the letter to the floor. Like my eyes starting to tear up, I hold the book closer to my chest as if, it, as if it was a replacement for the hug I so desperately needed. Why? Why did I get the old man involved in all this? I'm such an idiot. I'm the worst son anyone could ask for. You're a fool. Yes, I am. You'll be the reason for his death. I will. And then you'll be all alone. And I'll die alone. Indeed. I start to cry. My legs give up on me and end up on the floor. Screaming wouldn't solve a thing, but I really want to do that. Punching something wouldn't help either, but I feel like breaking everything around me. The voice in my head keeps on talking, injecting negative thoughts inside of me. But this time, I feel like I deserve it. I'm such a scumbag. Piece of trash that doesn't deserve happiness. No, I don't. Not one bit. You break everything you touch. You hurt everyone you know. Tell me, why should someone like you be alive at all? I... I don't know. Why am I alive? Why is this happening to me? You know why. Yes, I do. It's all my fault, as I keep on messing up every time. Maybe I should just... Maybe if I just... As if my brain is about to take even take me even further down into the abyss, I hear a noise coming, up, coming from one of the windows. It came from my room. I immediately compose myself and hide beside the doorframe, grabbing a candle that I found nearby and reading and readying up for battle. One second, y'all. I could definitely use some water right now. Ugh, got a damn bad headache. Had a headache for a few hours now. Ugh. Anyway. The footsteps grow louder and I even managed to hear a little humming on the other side. This person seems to be taking a sweet time checking out my room, but eventually I hear them stop in front of the door. Slowly the door creaks and opens. And as soon as this person comes out, I hit him hard in the head with a candle. He stumbles back and I grab him by the collar, pinning him on the wall. And to fuel my anger even more, I finally notice who he is. You little shit, give me a fucking reason why I shouldn't break your neck right now! Why? When did you come back? Boy, you should, boy, I should have told you. A reason, Pat, a fucking reason! Why are you here? The guy squirms as I push him harder into the wall. I have one of my arms on his little neck while the other is holding the candle. I'm trying not to force myself too hard on him, giving him room to breathe and talk. <sighs> I was just looking for the shop, of course. After all, no one was here. And someone had to take care of things. You fucking liar. I swear I'll kill you, man. Don't fuck with me. Okay, okay. I'm just here for the to I'm just here to loot why I swear. The place was empty and even the door was left open. You bastard, what happened here? I don't know, I don't know. Don't lie, Pat. I'm not, I'm not. 
I swear. Even if you say that, I don't think I can trust a rat like you. After all, you and I still have some unfinished business between us. Why the fuck did you leave me there that day, huh? Why? If you had been keeping watch as you were supposed to, none of this would have happened. None of it! The little guy seems about to shit himself. He's trembling and won't even dare to look at me in the eye. I'm sorry, White. I swear it wasn't intentional. He's lying. I know. He plotted against you and made you suffer. He did. It was his fault that all this happened. Yeah, you're right. It is his fault. He should suffer. He should. But pal, too tight. White? White? The rage inside of me starts to build up as a hellfire. Unable to stop it, I press his little and fragile neck even harder. I want to hurt him so bad. I couldn't care less about what he has to say. I'm not even thinking clearly at this point. You want to kill him? I... I do. And do it. Kill him. I'll kill you. I'll fucking kill you! I lift the candle in the air. All the rage, sorrow, fright, and loneliness that I've been feeling this past month are gathering inside of me. I want to see him bleed. See him on the floor begging for his life. Make him suffer. Die! As I'm about to bring the candle down, I feel a strong grip on my wrist. Looking back, I see Roderick looking at me with a severe expression on his face. When did he even get here? I'm trying to struggle out of his grasp, but his iron fist won't let, go, won't let me go anywhere. Are you sure you want to cross that line, Runt? Because after you do, there is no turning back. The eyes of the dead will follow you even in your dreams, and you have to carry that weight till you die. He lets go of my arm and then takes a few steps back, giving me enough space for me to do whatever I must do. Although I don't feel that burning rage anymore, I just feel empty and sad at this point. As you can look at Pat's eyes and notice that there's no light left in them. Fear immediately rushes over me, scared that I killed a man. I drop on my knees as I let go of his neck. He falls like a sack of potatoes and remains still on the floor. I reach, I reach his side and try to check if he's still breathing, and luckily, he is. Good choice. Killing isn't your style. I completely wanted to kill him, though. There was this rage inside of me. I didn't feel like me, but at the same time, I knew that it was fueled by my inner wishes. And I... I... My eyes start to water as I can't contain this overflowing amount of emotions that I'm feeling. It was his fault. His! But I should have known better, so I have no one else to blame but me. I made that decision. Nobody forced me to do it. And now Mr. Biscotti got involved in all this. He's in danger because of me. I'm so used... Suddenly I feel a hand rubbing my head. Roderick is awkwardly looking at me, like he doesn't even know what he's doing. He keeps on scratching my head, and I must admit, it has a calming effect. Such a silly act uh, makes me go over the edge, helping me unload all those pent-up emotions that I've been holding for the past month. Heck, in the past years. I don't remember when was the last time I cried this much. It remained like that for a while, and the more he scratches, the more my tail keeps on wagging. His hand feels warm and nice, leaving a nice sensation in my head when he finally lifts it up. I look up to meet his eyes, and for some reason he still looks uncomfortable. Is this his first time scratching a head or something? Did you calm down? Yeah, a little. Thanks. Don't mention it. No, seriously, I need... Seriously, don't. Wolf says as he takes a step back from me. He just is over there waiting for me to get up from the floor. Let's go. Yeah. I try my hardest to get up from the floor, but my knees feel like jelly and I end up back on it. And no matter how hard I try, I just don't have the strength to do it. This is so frustrating. Oh, for good to go for goddess's sake, just climb. He crouches with his back facing me. My cheeks flush, blush a deep tone of pink as this makes me feel really embarrassed. To think that he even has to walk for me, how lame. But on the other hand, a pinky ride doesn't sound so bad. So pushing my pride down, I climb onto his back, crossing my arms against his neck and pressing my face on the back of his neck. I've never been this close to the night, and immediately his strong masculine scent captivates me. It's so different to what I had pictured. I always thought that he would smell earthy and sweaty. After all, he uses this heavy armor most of the day. But to my surprise, he's got a different smell combined with his musk. It's... Vanilla. It's perfume. Alright, here we go. 
You ready, by the way? Not forgetting anything? No, I'm fine. We can go. The wolf nods and then starts walking. I hold tight onto his neck, not wanting to fall and hit my ass. Eventually, we leave it all behind. The shop, Pat, and the anger. All of it. As expected, being carried by another man on the street was bound to draw a few looks. I feared that Roderick would drop me at any given second, but to my surprise, he never did. He actually paid no mind to the people who looked at us weirdly and just carried on toward the, the high city. At the time, I was feeling a little embarrassed, but the comfort of the wolf made me forget all my social in inhibitions. At least until we made it past the, past the bridge of the higher city. And as soon as we crossed, rain started to fall upon the city. The wolf dropped me to my feet and told me to run for it, which I did. Even if I really didn't want to. I don't think I'll stop anytime soon. I say to Roderick as I take off my pants. I decided not to... I decided not... I decided to not wet the floor of our room with my clothes, taking most of them off before I set foot inside. On the other hand, the wolf didn't give two fucks about the floor since he entered the room with his full set of armor still on. I sigh at the idea of being forced to mop the floor. It's something I don't feel like doing at all, but I, I'm sure the wolf won't offer himself to take the job. Doesn't matter. We're done for the day. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or a tip if you can. It always helps. And until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!